Uh, Mr Speaker. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Mr Speaker, before passing on our season's greetings, we should say that this has been a most momentous year for the government and they should be given credit. But on examination of the list of success stories, we ran into a roadblock. <laughs> Ponytail gate. The nail failed twice. The surplus after seven years creative accounting and back to deficit the next quarter. The TPPA sold the public a lemon and not much about trade. The Iroquois sold to the Yanks and not our own people. The flag with all the levitation of a lead balloon. Uh, the housing bubble in Auckland, but only consents, no new houses, of course. The Nick Smith PR tour that ran into a deed of ownership that wasn't the government's in the first place. Uh, the uh, Sky City outsmarting the PM, another shonky deal. Uh, Mr Key wearing various hats, sometimes when he puts the cat out. Uh, Philip John Smith taking a holiday in Brazil. And then you've got the Malaysian diplomat, but no apology. Detainees on Christmas Island being sold out because the PM wants to be an Aussie PM groupie. Uh, the PM telling everybody what he does in the shower. The Circo fight clubs. The Crusher Collins comeback after Oravida. That's unbelievable. The biosecurity cutbacks and then the levies on all travellers to try and make up for the cut. Logs and milk, two products in a declining market. The worm farms, health and safety risks. Silver ferns farms, corrupt deal. The Saudi farm, corrupt bribe. The capping of the super gold card travel program. The solid energy collapse, used to be an SOE star. And then the so-called $25 increase in benefits while they took the acts to the welfare and all the other budgets as well. And then, of course, you have the Redcliffe School where you ignored the parents and crush it. But the real thing is they hit their big star performance in Northland in March. A team of strategists, ministerial cars, spin doctors, Crosby Texter, cabinet ministers, and the Prime Minister going there three or four times. He's on every hoarding, 500 of them. And then the master planner strategist, Mr Fixit, Stephen Joyce. <laughs> now that poor candidate up there, Mark Osmond, didn't have a hope in the Hades. Remember we said, they said we had a dog's chance. Well, up went Mr Joyce. He gave it his best shot and they came up way short. You see, what happened up there was the people up north had been lacking an MP standing up for them for years. And they started to get one. Oh, yes, really. Well, why don't you front up? I, I, I saw that member up at the, uh, up at the show in Waimati North, and no one knew who he was. He had, a, he, he had a badge on, and no one was shaking his hand. And I felt so sorry, I really did. Now, look, I just want to say this. I just want to say this on the national stage. On the international stage, Tim Grosser has been an embarrassment. He's been an embarrassment. It is clear from informed sources that he gets his information from watching, he gets his information from watching the Weather Girls on TV at, at six o'clock news every night. And the Prime Minister's had a, found it very hard going. You see, Prime Minister, you can't run a country through photos on Facebook. Drinking beer out of a bottle doesn't make you a Kiwi bloke. Haunting the All Blacks in the changing room is an embarrassment to them as well. Especially when you don't know one end of the paddock from the other. Especially when you've never played the game of rugby. No telling whatsoever. And Jerry's never played rugby either. I mean, now you, you ask Jimbo who can play rugby around here. Jimbo can, and we can. But they can't. Very short on talent. And here's the Prime Minister's many hats. National Party leader, all black baggage handler, international freedom fighter, golf cart caddy for the United States President. <laughs> the list is endless, Prime Minister. Our relationship with the United States is not going to be enhanced by you giving President Obama the number five iron. Or a three handshake. Or a putter. <laughs> or a three handshake when there's only two of you there. <laughs> <laughs> and the audacity to tell the Labour Party to get some guts and courage over ISIS. Look, political leadership is about policies. It's not about sabre rattling, especially when you are thousands of miles away from the danger. And while our troops are overseas in situations of danger, under a flag, why sell that flag down the drain? It's inappropriate. It's insulting. And the reception being given to this arrogant rebranding exercise, it's all over, over. Stop wasting any more millions. 
quit while you're behind. Because the burnout is so low with all the millions of dollars they put into it. And if he goes on, it'll show that he is all about personal arrogance and self-interest. You see, it's been, what did the Queen call it? An anus horribilis for the Blue Brigade. <laughs> and whilst I'm at it, one minute ago, well, I can't leave this out. If you're taken to the Queen's, the Queen's private residence and you take a photograph, you do not put it on Facebook. You see, what it tells me is that there's no class. And you can have all the money in the world, but you can't get class. It's a tragic, tragic. They'll go on next year trying to repopulate the country in a binge of consumerism, but the die is cast. In contrast, New Zealand finishes, first finishes in the best shape we've ever been. Make no bones about it. We've got offices in Invercargill all the way now to Kaitaia, Dargaville, Kerry, Kerry. Oh, yes, we're coming on strong, stream real fast now. Whanarei, walk with Nelson. Look, uh, the, the answer is, Jerry, your time's up. Your time's up. And last thing, Mr. Speaker, before I wish you generally a very happy Christmas, I really think you deserve one, actually, <laughs> and all the parliamentary staff, is that, believe me, if you look at the last six elections and the polls on election day compared to now and the period before those elections, then you are looking at the tip of an iceberg. Help's on its way. New Zealand First is going to be back real strong in 2016, ready for an election whenever they fly the white flag. 